Aloha, my name is Ka'iu Kimura and I am the Executive Director at the Imi Loa Astronomy Center of Hawaii, which is located at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. Uh, I came to the Congress this year, this is my first year here, and I came to participate on a panel with um, other indigenous Native American groups um, that talked about indigenous knowledge systems and the integration of that with science centers. In particular, with my science center, uh, we're integrating astronomy, uh, modern astronomy that's taking place atop of our mountain in Hilo, Hawaii, um, with our Hawaiian culture and our, and our way of knowing and our systems of understanding our universe. So it's really culture and science, intersection, integration for the betterment and the engagement of our local community. Uh, and that's really where my passion lays. Um, that's my background is in sort of community development as well as linguistics. So it's not in astronomy or science or museology for that matter. But I really believe that the science centers are a strong vehicle and a good advocate for the, uh, the bringing together of different worldviews, the bringing together of community around challenges and opportunities that our communities face. Um, and I really think that they're a powerful mechanism to enhance and, uh, and progress our community's um, values and efforts. For our people, the Hawaiian people uh, and, our, and our Polynesian um, cousins, if you will, throughout the Pacific, astronomy uh, is a huge part of our understanding of the universe. Um, in terms of our, our, our theories and our chants, um, which record our history, our ancestors were looking at the stars, you know, thousands of years ago to understand how the world came to be uh, as they knew it during their time of existence. Um, they used astronomy to set up their systems of life, their calendars, the way they interacted with one another, um, sustainability, how they fed themselves. Um, so I think that we as Emilo Astronomy Center continue with those, um, with those traditions and that heritage and we, we show not only those um, practices as a stagnant piece of the past, but more so how we can integrate those lessons of observation um, as done by our ancestors and apply them to today using modern technology, you know, through um, modern astronomical observatories. And um, it provides great educational benefit for our community because I think it presents a more uh, holistic view of looking at the universe and um, understanding it in terms of today and in terms of how we can e even progress um, to provide more opportunities in the future. So I think that culture and science coming together really affords a robust, healthy um, uh, and encouragement of diverse perspectives, but coming together with a single common goal in mind, and that's to empower community. What's the biggest challenge that you face in doing this? I think the biggest challenge faced in trying to accomplish this uh, integration of culture and science is just maybe some um, feelings that perhaps culture is trying to take over science. Um, and I also think on the reverse, there's some people who are very steeped in cultural values and traditions who maybe can't, um, and you know, for a lot of historical reasons, um, accept science as, as a way to help empower our community. So it's really, um, the challenge is the lack of communication that's happened in the past. So I think today that presents a good opportunity for science centers to bring people together and to educate one another about their perspectives. Because I find once you sit down and kind of start to have the conversation, if facilitated properly, you will help to um, expand people's views on both culture and both science. And it's not about becoming, um, it's not about promoting one over the other. I think in the idea of inferiority and superiority uh, should not be pursued, but more so it, it's a common conversation that everybody's having together. So I think uh, communication is probably the biggest challenge in accomplishing um, that. From, from a, a Western, maybe European point of view, um, I, I guess the, there's probably kind of very historic stigmas attached to it because the, the battle that took place between, the, say, the church and the and the scientists, you know, the church had a habit of burning scientists for, for coming up with ideas that went beyond the, 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 the kind of the spiritual but religious boundaries. Uh, you know, that battle took place and ultimately the scientists, you know, there was a 
I guess, a, a treaty that was drawn up where, you know, the scientists got the heavens and the church <laughs> got the souls. Um, and I, I still wonder if there isn't that, still, that, that kind of stigma attached to conversions. I think for indigenous peoples, um, I think that the, the challenge is a little bit different from, from the, the religion versus science conversation. Because uh, I think for indigenous people, science and, and, um, is, is more of a practical thing that helps you, you know, with your daily living. Um, and so I think more the challenge and struggle for indigenous cultures is the historical um, struggles in terms of colonization and oppression and I think um, that's more of the battle between culture and science. It's not necessarily the content of science but it's more so the historical societal um, struggles that has been um, faced and the stigma you know that modern science is more of a part of the predominant ivory tower culture versus the grassroots indigenous people so I think that's the perception, and so I think we have the opportunity to kind of um, dis dispel that and change that um, in, in the science center world. So overcoming the arrogance of science in a way. Yeah, and overcoming the arrogance of science maybe, and also um, encouraging um, indigenous cultures and, and, and our beliefs to, to kind of um, come up to the table um, together with science to look at opportunities of progress.